Lions and 49ers, Ravens and Chiefs, a trip to the Super Bowl on the line today. Welcome to the Road to Billions. Andy, Steve, and Corbin here to break down all of the best bets. Player props, final lines, alt lines, same game parlays, anytime touchdown scores will get you ready for NFL action today. Where we, uh, before we get into it, guys, please hit the like button and leave us a comment. Tell us your best bets. Very, very excited to see what everyone's liking for this week. And we've got some special things planned for the Super Bowl. We'll talk about that over the next uh, couple weeks. So let's get right into it here, guys. Let's start off with the passing props here. Only a couple games here, and I guess we'll start with uh, passing yards. So, Steve, I'll come to you first. Quarterbacks on passing yards, Chiefs, Ravens. And I will tell you, uh, I talked to Ariel, uh, Ariel Epstein, prop queen. She's at the Baltimore game, and the weather does not quite – it doesn't look as bad as it was going to. It's wet, but it's not pouring. Um, the chance of rain during the game as of yesterday was around 80%. On Friday, it was like 90%, and now it's down to like 60 65%. So – just a little caveat. It doesn't look like it's going to be as bad as expected. Not going to be dry, but it's not going to be a complete monsoon. So uh, that being said, Steve, we'll start with passing yards. Uh, what do you like from any of these four quarterbacks? Yeah, this isn't this category isn't my favorite this week, but I, I do lean towards Brock Purdy going over the 276 and a half. It's a big number, but I just know the line. They're so stout against the run. And, we, and teams have been able to carve them up through the air. I think the 49ers have a big day um, passing the ball. <clears throat> and while it's a big number, I think he clears it today. Corbin, you like any passing yards from these guys? I quite like Goff over 257.5. That's the one that stands out uh, the most to me. I think he can really capitalize on the 49ers, who have shown some weaknesses in uh, recent weeks on defense. Uh, he's over in six straight. He seems to pass the ball consistently no matter what's going on with the run. He, they could be running the ball 10 yards a carry and they'll still find a way to throw it, it seems, almost every down. Uh, 49ers are middle of the pack versus the pass, so I think it sets up uh, well for Goff to have a good day. Uh, yeah, you know, I was, I was looking at unders in this Chiefs and Ravens game, and now I'm not so sure. Um, that the that the unders are the way to go, and we've seen these numbers kind of creep up over the last couple of days. I actually agree with both you guys. I think I think if there's a game that's going to be shootout, it's pretty obvious that it's the Lions and the 49ers, and it wouldn't surprise me if both these teams and both these quarterbacks had really good days. So you could be looking at some nice uh, parlay pieces if you take some alt lines, things like that. Let's look at passing touchdowns here. Um Again, you kind of see the best, uh, the best uh, Brock Purdy, Jared Goff. You got these best, uh, the, the the worst odds here. Uh, Steve, any any touchdown passing props? Everybody's at one and a half, so I don't know. What do we what do we do with passing touchdowns? Anything? I actually kind of, I just based on the price, I look <clears throat> I look towards Goff here. I while I think that Purdy goes over, I agree with Corbin that Goff goes over as well. I think this turns out to be a shootout like you had just mentioned. And that for the price, I think it's the best bargain on the board for Goff to go over one and a half at, at uh, negative 110. Purdy, it's just a little, you know, negative 190. It's a little too rich for my blood. Corbin, you like any passing touchdowns? I don't, but quickly, whilst we were uh, just mentioning that we expect the Lions and 49ers to be a shootout, I was looking, my book uh, actually offers most points in the game. So it's obviously most points, either Chiefs versus Ravens or Lions versus 49ers. And all three of us seem to lean that the Lions and 49ers is going to be far more of a shootout. It's only minus 180 for that play. I don't know if all your books offer it, but I'm sure one of them does. That was just a fault. But yeah, no passing touchdowns. Uh, let's take a look at any passing completions. I Now that the weather's a little bit nicer, I, I'm i leaning this Lamar Jackson over his passing completions. You go back and look in games that were close, he goes over. Now that the weather's going to be a little bit better, uh, I think you could see a little bit more offense from them. And I keep going back to that stat where Buffalo held the ball 37 minutes last week against Kansas City like it goes down as a Kansas City win but man they just they did not hold the ball for very long the Bills were able to move the ball and this has been you know top three offense throughout so I kind of like the 19 and a half 
I mean, that being said, though, you're sitting there looking at Purdy and Goff. If we like Purdy and Goff to go over there, they're – they're passing yards. Don't we like the completions? Corbin, come to you. Do you like any pass completions here? I don't. I prefer just the, the yards over the completions. But as you say, if they're going to go over the uh, yards, they'll probably get the completions anyway. But yeah, I prefer the yards. Uh, Steve, you like any of the completions? Yeah, I'm going to stay right in the same game, and I would go with the, the Purdy over 21 and a half at negative 115 um, for just the reasons that I stated before. I think this game turns into a shootout, and I think that 21 and a half seems like a fair number for Purdy to clear today. Um, uh, I guess we'll go with interceptions. Okay. Who's got, who's got the onions, Steve, who pick which quarterback's going to throw it to the wrong team. You got some plus money in here. Yeah, man, this is a tough one. I, I'll, I'll go with, I'll go with Goff out of these four guys to make, even though it's the one that with the worst odds, it's still only <laughs> negative negative one thirty-five. Not bad. but, um, of, yeah, I have the least confidence in him of these of these four, though. And and, and I think that if he's going to be throwing late in the game, he could make that mistake. Uh, you, might, I mean, you might not get it till late in the game, but I think it's it's a he throws a, at least one today. Corbin, you like any interceptions? I don't. If I had to pick one, it would probably be uh, the golf, same as uh, Steve. Or maybe Lamar Jackson not to throw an interception. That's the one that probably stands out the most of the four. All right, well, let's move to receiving props here, guys. And while you're watching, please hit the like button. Leave us a comment. Don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying all the gambling content, uh, daily videos, individual game breakdown videos for college basketball, NBA, NHL, everything at uh, the Wager Talk YouTube channel. Let's just start with the Chiefs and the Ravens. Mark Andrews, the big, uh, the big news for Baltimore um, I don't know. I was actually kind of wondering. You're never gonna tell. You're never gonna tell Mark Andrews don't play. But I don't know, Steve. <laughs> Isaiah Likely has been playing really well. Like you're, you're obviously you obviously want Mark Andrews back. But a lot of names here. What do we think? Uh, just in receiving props, uh, we'll start with the receiving yards. Chiefs and Ravens. It's funny you bring up Likely because now we get a discount at his number at twenty two and a half. It was you know around. 29 and a half I think a a little bit above that prior to the Andrews news and I'm sure they're going to try to get Andrews involved in the game we just don't know what what we're going to get out of him today and I think that that's such a low number the Ravens do run a good amount of uh, two tight end sets so I think that likely kind of could could get under you know they might not be looking his way as much as they normally would here and such a low number he could get that done with one grab so that likely 22 and a half over really stands out to me. Corbin, you like any receiving yards in this game? Yeah, I've got two. My favorite uh, play on the board is Mark Andrews, as you just discussed. I, I, everyone knows I love playing players coming back from injury. Super low total. He's Lamar Jackson's safety blanket. Biggest game of the season so far. I think Andrews is going to step up. He's practi- He's had full practice all week. Could end up being a close game, but yeah, I think if he's going to throw to anyone, it's going to be Andrews. And he's clear- obviously cleared it in every game that he's played this year. So I will say there is a, the second play I have is actually uh, Gray over ten and a half. So he's gone over in three of the last four and the one he didn't. He still had three targets, which is an encouraging sign. Super low total. I think he could easily get that with just one catch. And I'm expecting the Chiefs to pass a lot here and potentially be down. So that's where I'm looking for those two. I, I'm with you, Noah Gray. I thought I was going to be the sneaky guy. I, just, I thought that just <laughs> sounded really – it did it. I mean, he's got a catch in the, uh, you know, against Miami. He had a 20-yard catch, and against Buffalo, mm-hmm. he had a 12-yard catch. So this is like – this is one of those numbers. I love these numbers where one catch um, can get you over. I don't know how anybody in their right mind could take an over on Mecole Hardman. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> he had one catch last week for a couple yards, and then he uh, he touched the ball twice, and he fumbled both times. One of them was the big loss. So, I mean, I, did, didn't the Chiefs learn their lesson? Like, no, we're not putting the game in Mecole Hardman's hands. So, I, I, I don't know how you could take a Mecole Hardman uh, catch in, in this one. Um, I guess there's a couple of others. I was wondering about Justice Hill taking the under. I'm not sure how involved he's going to be in the game, but that's kind of one of those numbers that uh, was a, I was a little worried about. I noticed, um, well, I'll, I'll get to him in rushing yards. Let's just move to the Lions and the 49ers. They do have lines out on Debo Samuel. He's going to be good to go today. 47 and a half is his number. So, uh, Corbin, come to you for this game. Any receiving yards that you like in this one? 
Yeah, I have Joan Jennings over 17 and a half. Again, he's gone over in three of his last four. Debo's obviously banged up. He has so much speed, and this Lions defense is really not that great. Last week, he had six targets, five receptions, and 61 yards. I think, again, another player that I think could easily clear this in one or two catches. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take Debo to, well, obviously be banged up. If he gets hit hard a couple of times, he could easily re-aggravate his injury and be out for the whole game, quite honestly. So, yeah, I'm going to go Jawan Jennings over 17 and a half. Steve, you like any of these? Yeah, this is one of my favorite plays of the day is Brandon Ayuk over 75 and a half receiving yards. Uh, part, obviously, a big part of it is Debo potentially you know, he's going to be giving it a go, but he might not make the entire game or he could be hampered. Um, the Ayuk's had 100 plus now in three of his last five meaningful games. I'll set the Rams week 18 game aside. It was, you know, he, he didn't have much there. He, the, the number one team barely played the Lions um, giving up the third most uh, yards to opposing wide receivers, and they've just gotten carved up recently by number ones. Evans, 147, Nakua, 181, Jefferson, 192, and 141, Lamb, 141, Alave, 119. Uh, it, it, this seems like such a low total. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the higher numbers on the board, but against this pass defense, I think Ayuk cooks today, and he, he I think 100, you could ladder this up to 100. Um, I like George Kittle on basically most of his props. I like 58 and a half. Um, uh, this is a Lions team that's not great against tight ends. Um, I like him a little bit more on the longest reception, which we'll get to. Uh, let's take a look at some of these receptions here. Um, Steve, do you like any of the receptions numbers, or are you more focused on the yards? Yeah, I haven't. I don't really have much for receptions in this one. I, I think I'll pass on receptions. I've been more focused on yards than anything else. Corbin, you like any receptions, props? No, same as Steve. I'm more on the uh, yards than the receptions. So, <clears throat> I love Miko Harmon at one and a half at, at minus one ten. <laughs> Give me the under on that one. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I don't see, I don't see two, I don't <laughs> see two catches. I don't understand why it's, why it's minus one ten. I mean, he only had one last week. He blew it. I'm just not really sure how much. I, I guess the the thinking is well, if they have to pass. And they have to, you know, if they're, they're playing catch up. But if they're not, I'm not really sure why, how he gets involved in the game uh, on that one. So uh, there was the, the other one that kind of jumps out to me is Gus Edwards just to have a catch. Uh, he seems to just pop up having a catch here or there. He had one last week um, in a meaningful game against Houston. You know, uh, didn't have any in the last couple games, but – of the, of the regular season. One was that massive blowout against Miami, and then, you know, he barely played against Pittsburgh in that uh, messy game. So, I don't know. He just needs one little broken play where it gets dumped off, and there you go, easy cash on that one. So, um, I was going to bring up uh, longest reception, uh, yards on longest reception here on George Kittle. Uh, it's 23 and a half. He's gone over this in – uh, four out of five games, and the one game that he didn't go over was like was that game against Washington that didn't really mean a whole lot. So uh, I think this 23 and a half, if you like Kittle, I think that could be a really sneaky way. It's only minus 125. Um, easily, easily could break a really uh, a couple of long ones against this Lions pass defense. And I guess if we like Brock Purdy, then uh, we have to go that way. Uh, Corbin, you want to talk about kicking props or defensive props, right? Yeah, I have a, I have a couple that I really like the look of. Uh, we'll start with my favorite defensive play. So it's tackles and assists. I really like uh, McDuffie over four and a half. I think it's at yeah, right at the bottom there, Trent McDuffie. Um, so he seems to be their run stopper for the Chiefs. Uh, I'm sure if I'm wrong, someone in the comments can correct me. But he seems to be he seems to get a lot more involved. Uh, in the run defense, expecting a lot of running from the Ravens. He had five versus Be the Bears earlier in the season, who plays somewhat of a similar style with the quarterback and the runs. So, yeah, I'm going to take uh, McDuffie over four and a half. A couple others that I'm looking at, but potentially not playing. Uh, Clowney over two and a half. Uh, I think it's near the top. Yeah, second one down. Um where is it? Yeah, so he's over in four of seven, defensive end for the Ravens. He's going to stop all the short check downs, I think, all the Kelsey uh, kind of action and the run, uh, short dump-offs to Pacheco. 
I think, yeah, I think he could, two and a half, such a low number for one of their key defensive players. So I like that one. And then my last one is actually Reed, Justin Reed, under six and a half. I'm not sure how many tackles he's really going to get here, considering I'm expecting the Ravens to run a lot. He only had two versus the Bears in that game that I mentioned was a similar, somewhat style uh, offense. And uh, he's only gone over in three of his last six. So I was going to look under for him. Uh, do you want me to do my kicker now as well? Keep firing away. You're on fire. <laughs> uh, we'll go with uh, the Lions kicker. Is it Bla- Bla- Badgley? Badgley. Badgley. Under one and a half. So it's juicy at minus 195, but you could easily put that with something else if you want to bring it down or just play it for half a unit or so. We all know that the Lions go for it on almost all the four, four down. Uh, he's only had one field go in each of his last three they're going to have to put up points. You have to feel like they're going to go even more aggressive to get the touchdowns here against the 49ers. I could quite easily see them going for it on almost all the occasions. I don't think three points are really going to help them much in this situation. So I'll take him under one and a half. I really like that play. I, I, uh, there's been some other plays that I've been looking at with that exact same mindset. Like Detroit's not kicking a field goal unless it's like fourth and Exactly. Over over what six or seven <clears throat> yards? Like anything mm-hmm. under? Like like th- there's no way that Dan Campbell and that team is going to be like, no, we're going to win this game with field goals. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> we'll just get our pass defense out there to slow them down. Like, the, so, the, only, the only way I could see it is if. Uh, as you said, if there's like a fourth and above a six or like right at the start of the game and then somehow they have like a drive right at the end where they need a field goal. That's kind of the only situation I see it. But even at 195 seems very unlikely to me. So Yeah, so he was one for one against Tampa Bay, one for one against the Rams to go back to the regular season, one for one against Minnesota, two for two against Dallas, one for one against Minnesota, and O for O against Denver. So, you know, he's making them. He's just not taking a bunch yeah. of them. So uh, I'm with you on that one. I think that's a pretty good one. Um, if you like uh, team totals, you can get kind of sneaky with some of these kickers. Like if you like like if you like Detroit to score three touchdowns, instead of taking a team total or something, you can get plus 130 on Badgley to hit his extra yeah. points. Uh, I think he's missed like he's, – he's like 13 of 15 for the year. Um you could also take Jake Moody if you like them to get four touchdowns uh, for San Francisco. So there's some sneaky uh, ways to attack those. So I actually have a, I actually have a sack prop. Well, if we're going to stay in defense, I have a, a sack prop. I could go over really quick if you want. Go over. I am ready. What you like? I'm looking at um, Justin Matabike, I think is how you pronounce his name. So over a quarter sack at plus 140 he's had a half a sack or more in 13 of 18 games on the year and i know that mahomes you know he's tough to sack we, he usually especially in a postseason game he's not going to get sacked very often but with potentially sloppy field conditions for a guy that's going to be you know pushing hard to to rush to rush mahomes here to, at plus 140 to only have to get a half sack to clear it that's one that stand, stood out to me as far as a defensive prop yeah, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at his stats right now. Yeah, 13 on the year. And it wasn't like he had, like, one game with a with a bunch of sacks. He got kind of spread out uh, over there. So, yeah, good stuff on the defensive props. All right, guys. Uh, we, didn't do, it, I, 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 yes. we haven't done rushing, have we? Uh, rushing props. You're right. We jumped right into that. All right, sorry about that. Rushing props. I was going to go to positive vibes. We'll do positive <laughs> vibes after rushing. Uh, Corbin, uh, let's start with Chiefs and Ravens. What do you like rushing? Yeah, I've got uh, one rushing play in the top game. Uh, it's Lamar Jackson. I mean, he's going to he's gonna run the ball. The, the, the one question I haven't worked out yet is if I prefer 64.5 yards or 10.5 rushing attempts. But uh, he's over his rushing attempts in four of the last six. The Chiefs are really not good versus the run. Uh, he had 100 yards last week. When it matters, Lamar just puts it in his own hands and runs. So that's the play I like in that game. Again, haven't quite worked out if I prefer the yards or the attempts, but I feel like both could easily hit. So so uh, Lamar's played in a couple of really sloppy games this year. One was, I remember it, you know, well, it was against the Colts, and he went over his rushing attempts and his yards, and then against the Rams, he went over his rushing attempts and his yards. So if it is wet, it, it – it tracks that you're probably good <laughs> either or. Exactly. So I guess I, I kind of like his rushing attempts. If you get a couple kneel downs, those count. 
So, um, although that being said, I got burned. I took Josh Allen on his rushing attempts. He had one really, really long one, so he flew over his rushing yards. So, yeah, I know what you're saying. I, I, I know exactly what you're saying. There's some, there's really, really tough <laughs> to, to try and figure out Lamar Jackson yeah. court. That being said, he could have 13 carries for 120 yards and everything cashes in that one. So, uh, rushing props for Chiefs and the Ravens, Steve? Yeah, I, I actually like the quarterback from the other side going over um, Mahomes over 26 and a half in a, in a postseason game. It's a little juicy at negative 140. The Ravens are, are stronger. They're strong on both sides, but they're stronger against the pass. And I think that he may struggle to find some open targets with a little bit of a sloppy field. He ends up breaking free a couple times and um, and clearing this pretty low total at 26 and a half. And, you know, he's going to go all out today, obviously. Nothing left. You know, we're going to lay it all on the line today being the championship game. So give me the over on Mahomes, 26 and a half. Uh, I was looking at Justice Hill, and I got his number at seven and a half. So I looked. In the regular season, he went over this three times. They were games where they were up really, really big. And you look last week, and again, they were up real big. And he had 13 carries for 66 yards. I went and looked. I believe it was either eight or nine of those carries were on the last couple drives where they put, wow. they put him in to run out the clock. He was not getting carries uh, earlier in the game. I don't know if this game is close. I'm not sure he gets over this seven and a half. And if you're alive better, if there is, like, if whatever reason the Ravens just – go crazy and all you know it's 24 three at halftime or something justice hills your guy it looks like he's the one that they put in to run out the clock last week not gus edwards so i was looking at justice hill kind of depending on game script if you think your ravens are going to roll yeah throw justice hill in but if you think it's going to be a really close game it just it doesn't look like he's that involved when the game is really close so uh let's move to the lions and 49ers steve do you like any rushing props in this one yeah, I'm going to go back to Jameer Gibbs on the under. I know I gave that out last week and he burnt me, but it's because he had a, a very long run. And if he, the 49ers have been great against the run for the majority of the season. Last week, they did give up over 100 to Aaron Jones, but if you look at it, it was a 52 a yard run. We've kind of seen the we've seen the Lions kind of flip flop here. The first play, playoff game it was Montgomery. And last week it was Gibbs. I think this tends to be based on the matchup. This sets up more as a Montgomery game to me. I think we see Gibbs get his you know his his normal workload, but a little bit less than usual on the ground, a little bit more through the air. So I'll take a shot on his under forty nine and a half again this week. Corbin, you like any rushing props in Lions and Forty ers I'm actually going to go head to head with Steve. I almost think the complete opposite. I think this is a Jameer Gibbs game. I saw the way Aaron Jones ran through them last week. I know it was a red herring in that the 49ers have had a pretty good run defense, but that speed on the outside just seems to kill them so much, the 49ers. Gibbs is definitely the pace option of the two, had uh, nine carries for 74 last week, whereas Montgomery just seems to be, he just seems to be slowing down. I know the total's kind of low at 43 and a half already. He's he's still under this in uh, two of the last three, only had 33 yards last week. He's still getting the carries, but he's really struggling to... Uh, to do anything with them. I'd love to, if you could just check the Jameer Gibbs longest reception, that also is a play that I would be interested in. So uh, longest rush or do you want longest reception? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that one, uh, so 14 and a half. I quite like that as well. I feel like if he's going to get over 49 and a half, he's going to have to have a carry over 14. Yeah. And a half. So, I would agree with that too. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm looking. So, um, I was looking at some rush attempts, and man, this number on Christian McCaffrey is pretty pretty big, eighteen and a half. I don't think he went over last week. Um, I, I I wanted to take an under on David Montgomery, but I probably am not gonna uh, stay over there. But uh, the Brock Purdy over two and a half rush attempts, again a couple kneel downs. You. Be sail over over this one, <laughs> so I was really surprised to to see that one. Obviously, you kind of need a lot to go right, but uh, they do have some. Uh, you know, Detroit with Hutchinson, they can get some pressure uh, coming off the edge. So I gotta I gotta believe if he gets in a situation where 
you know, he he goes where, where they're kneeling down, then, you know, I mean, he had six carries for 14 yards last week in the playoff game. So I thought that one was pretty surprising because if we get a situation at the end of the half or the end of the game where he kneels down, you're pretty good. And if he takes off running, then, you know, you could you could potentially see see something like that. So, all right. I believe that breaks. I believe that does it for passing, receiving, rushing, and defensive props. Um Wanted to uh, thank everybody. Positive vibes from the audience. Uh, listen, we did a uh, did a show on Friday. Talked about how it was a rough week, and uh, nobody like nobody said anything mean, which was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a <the> change. <laughs> which, <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yeah, which would have been yeah, which would have really defeated the purpose. <laughs> but uh, like, um, I've been slacking with my comments due to my own headspace of late. But today's show is one that I needed. Mental health is a real thing, even if the macho thing to do is to pretend otherwise. I've learned we need all those reminders to take care of ourselves, and sometimes the simplest signs of encouragement from others can make all the difference regardless of the source. I needed this reminder today. Thank you. Awesome comment. Like, really, really appreciate that. Um, really cool. I'll, yeah, I'll continue to, uh, to to be open and honest about everything that's going on. Like, yeah, just it was a bad week for me <laughs> so it just well we can talk about it if you guys want to talk about it please just reach out to me uh you can send me an email send me a dm leave a comment um yeah we'll talk so a lot of great comments tony mac f and bob uh really nice one from raj from canada scott said something uh scott said he would be honored to share a beer or coffee with me uh why not both uh, <laughs> let's make a day out of it. So, uh, thanks for that guys. So leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, tell us your best bet. Let's, uh, let's have a really good profitable day here. Um, let's go to the alternate universe here, Corbin. Uh, it's, it's we're kind of limited here with only two games, but you did manage to find a couple things. What do you like here? Yeah. So I really like, uh, this is actually the same game parlay, I think, but this is what I really like this one. Uh, Rice, uh, four plus receptions. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Nine straight over have been consistently putting this one in parlays. So this has been a cash cow for us. Uh, I, I actually think the Chiefs could have issues running the ball here. Pacheco obviously banged up. If they bring in Clyde edwards he he sucks. So I don't <laughs> particularly see anything coming from him. So I, I think they're going to be down. I think they're going to be throwing the ball. And Rice is one of the only players that actually has hands that can actually catch a ball for the Chiefs. So, uh, yeah, four receptions. Just keep rolling with that. Uh, and then Lamar Jackson. I mentioned that I liked his uh, rushing and rushing attempts. So just using an alt line of 50 plus. Uh, obviously had a hundred last week Chiefs aren't that great versus the run big game I think Lamar's gonna uh, put it in his own hands and run quite often so you sent me your plays and I literally had no idea which one fit <laughs> yeah it's all good I'll, ro I'll roll in I'll roll into the next one if you want to queue it up there we go <laughs> yeah, so go uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so this is my old play of the week so it's uh, Ravens over 16 and a half they've gone over in every game this year other than the one that they uh, played their backups versus the Steelers mentioned Chiefs aren't great versus the run that just sets up for a good offensive day I think for the Ravens uh, Chiefs over 12 and a half. They put up 26 and 27 the last two weeks. They have so much playoff experience. Obviously, Mahomes at quarterback is a huge factor in this. Uh, of all the parts, actually, this is probably my least favorite of the four. So even if you didn't like this one part, you could easily sub in like rice receptions from before or anything else. So you can mix and match these parts. Uh, Lions over 13 and a half. They just have so much gung ho offense, as I've put it. Just so many, so much speed, so many weapons. The 49ers defense hasn't looked great of late. I think they could easily, easily get to the 20s, let alone a uh, 13 and a half. Uh, and then uh, Brock Purdy over 209 and a half passing. Obviously another alt line. Uh, he's over in six straight. He's quite dependable. He's quite like steady. There's not many fluctuations. Not many games he's gone under this total in the whole season. I don't think the Lions' defense is particularly complex. I don't think they're going to throw at him anything that he hasn't already seen before this year. So just going to keep rolling with that. Uh, put all of that together, and it's minus 128. Love it. Love all those pieces. I think you're on the right uh, right road there. We're going to get to the uh, pay dirt parlay, Steve. You're, you're catching fire here towards the end. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so real quick, what we have up, guys, we've got a 4% NFL best bet that is up. We're on a 45 and 25 NFL run. So 
going into the playoffs, we're coming off a really nice two and one week, profitable last week. It finished the season really, really good. So that is up at wagertalk.com. Uh, it's a best bet. Had my eye on. Wanted to make sure the lines didn't move today. Lines were steady, so that is up there. So Steve, we'll get to the uh, Pater parlay. Tell everyone what you have up and where we can find you at. I also have an NFL best bet locked and loaded for today. 37 and 26 the last two seasons on the NFL best bets. I have an NBA pack up for today as well. And, um, and yeah, that's all I have for today. Uh, looking forward to looking forward to the championship games though for, for today that I have a great play today. All right. So we got any time touchdown scores. Obviously this gets more and more difficult. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're down. Then there was two. <laughs> so, yeah. So the options are limited here, but what do you like here today? Steve? Well, we'll go back. We'll go back to Pacheco. Last week we cashed the pay dirt parlay with Pacheco, Allen and Evans, but unfortunately we lose Allen and Evans. Pacheco has the longest current touchdown streak in the NFL at six games. He is questionable, but he, he's he's good to go. He's, he's seen all point all directions are all signs are pointing to him starting today and getting the lion's share of the carries like he has been. He's been getting the huge bulk of the carries. Uh, the Ravens are better against the pass than against the run, and with the weather that we've talked about a little bit, it's we know it's not quite as bad as we thought it would be, but uh, it, it sets up for a ground game to me. And if anything is in the red area. I, I think the Chiefs will be looking Pacheco's way. Uh, Ayuk, we, t- we talked about earlier, and I love him today as far as his receiving yards over, but I also love him to score. Lions gave up the third most wide receiver touchdowns on the season with 22. We've seen him torched by number one wide receivers all year long. They've already allowed scores to Evans, Nakua, and Atwell in the postseason. Three, three wide receivers have scored against them in two games, and we know Debo's questionable and could be hampered. He's going to give it a go, but he could be hampered. I think this sets up for a huge game for IU. So give me the two of them combined together. Uh, we kept it limited to two this week. Stick with a sure, not sure thing, but stick a little closer to, you know, usually we're around eight to one or nine to one with a, a three player parlay, but I just couldn't find a third guy that I wanted to add to it and risk it. So let's go with these two guys together for plus 372. Super Bowl is going to be real tough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Super Bowl is going to be amazing. So you're going to need a shootout. <laughs> yeah. In the Super Bowl well, that's what I was thinking. If I, if I go with three guys, I'm really boxing myself in if we have a low scoring game, you know? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. All right, guys, that is going to do it for We normally do three NFL best, bet, but best bets, but there's only two games, so we pretty much talked about enough guys and enough categories there. So, and uh, honestly, best bet is up at wagertalk.com. Uh, Steve's is up at sportsmemo.com. So if you want the best of the best, uh, that's where they are. So, all right, guys, that is going to do it for us. We are going to uh, have we're going to have so much fun leading up to the Super Bowl. I've got something special planned. Uh, we'll start talking about it on uh, Monday or Tuesday on our next episode of Road to Million. So looking forward to it. Soon as props start coming up, we will start doing some videos and talking about them. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, leave us a comment. Good luck on your plays. Remember, you don't have to go all in on these plays just because it's <laughs> the final couple games of the season. Practice good bankroll management. Good luck on your plays. We'll see you ever next time on the Road to Millions. Good luck. Good luck.